Jaya Prabhupada, Jaya Prabhupada, Jaya Prabhupada, Jaya Prabhupada. Prabhupada, 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 Prabhupada. Jam Vishnu Bhad Paramahansa Parivraj Akacharya Asto Tadasata Shri Srimad Abhai Charanada Vinda Bhakti Vidanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Kija. Savior of the whole world is Kam BBT founder of Srila Prabhupada Kija. Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam Kija. Samaveta Bhakti Vrinda Kija. Srila Prabhupada Kija. Welcome, dear devotees, for the Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam, our opportunity to glorify in the association of the Vaishnavas this beautiful text, the Srimad Bhagavatam. So, Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Jeva Narottamam Devim Sarasvatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Udirayet Srinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shavana Kirtanaha Rajyanta stoya badrani vidu noti suritsatam nasha prayeshva badreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavatu tamashloke bhaktir bhavati nashtiki om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So today we're reading from Canto 3, Chapter 8 Sorry, Chapter 18 Titled Here we go Oops the battle between Lord Bor and Hiranyaksha, and today it's text eight. Sagam udastat salilasya gochare. Sagam udastat salilasya gochare. Vinyas yatasyam adadhats fasatvam. Vinyas yatasyam adadhats fasatvam. Abhishtuto vishva shrija prashuner. Abhishtuto Vishva Shrija Prasuner Apur Yamano Vibudhai Pashyotorehe Apur Yamano Vibudhai Pashyotorehe Sagam Udastat Salilasya Gochare Vinyas Yetasyam Adadhats Fasatvam Abhishtuto Vishva Shrija Prashuner Apur Yamano Vibudhai Pashyatorehe Sagam Murasta Salilasya Gochare Vinyas Yetasyam Adadhats Fasatvam Abhishtuto Vishva Shrija Prasuner Apur Yamano Vibudai Pashyatorehe Prabhus, please. 
Mataji's place. Sagan Murasta Salila Shakotare Vinyas Yatasyan Haradhat Sasatvam Vinyas Yatasyan Apoyamano Vibodha Pashatore Sagamurasta Salilas Chagotare Vinyas Yatasyam Haradat Sasatvam Apistotovishvashitakashune <laughs> Vinyasitasyam Haradat Svasatvam Avishtato Vishra Shijat Pasune Apur Yamano Vibhudat Pashatore So word by word, Saha, the Lord, Gam, the earth. Urastad on the surface, Salilasya of the water, Gochare within his sight, Vinyasya having placed Tasyam to the earth, Adadhat he invested, Sva his own, Satvam. Existence, Abhishtutaha, praised, Vishvashrija, by Brahma, the, the creator of the universe, Prasunai, by flowers, Apuryamanaha, becoming satisfied, Vibhudhai, by the demigods, Bhashyataha, while looking on, Adahe, the enemy. Translation and divine purport by His Divine Grace, Abhay Charanada Vinda Bhaktivedanta, Swami Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, Kijai. 
The Lord placed the earth within his sight on the surface of the water and transferred to her his own energy in the form of the capacity to float on the water. While the enemies stood looking on, Brahma, the creator of the universe, extolled the Lord and the other demigods rained flowers on him. Purport. Those who are demons cannot understand how the Supreme Personality of Godhead floated the earth on water. But to devotees of the Lord, this is not a very wonderful act. Not only the earth, but many, many millions of planets are floating in the air. And this floating power is endowed to them by the Lord. There is no other possible explanation. The materialists can explain that the planets are floating by the law of gravitation, but the law of gravitation works under the control or direction of the Supreme Lord. That is the version of Bhagavad Gita, which confirms by the Lord's statement that behind the material laws or nature's laws and behind the growth of maintenance, production, and evolution of all the planetary systems behind everything is the Lord's direction. The Lord's activities could be appreciated only by the demigods headed by Brahma, and therefore, when they saw the uncommon prowess of the Lord in keeping the earth on the surface of the water, they showered flowers on him in appreciation of his transcendental activity. Oma jnana timinandasya jananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam jena tasma shri gurave namaha shri chaitanya manobishtam stapitam yena bhutale svayam rupa kadamayam tadati svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Parakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padahan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasvati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashatya Deshatarine Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Bhavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavanishvari Vrishabhanu Sutta Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Good morning dear devotees as we have this great opportunity in the association of the Vaishnavas in front of the glorious Sri Sri Radha Gopinath Shri Shri Goranita, Shri Shri Jagannath Baladev, Subhadra Panchatattva, Shri Nasringadev, and the Guru Parampara to glorify this beautiful text of the Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam. So we pray for forgiveness if we make any mistakes and we beg that we can get some mercy flowing so we can discuss this beautiful text in the proper mood and the, in the glorification of the Supreme Lord. So starting with the translation, uh, the word extolled actually means glorification. So Lord Brahma here 
is looking on and he glorifies the Supreme Lord. And we know Lord Brahma to be very uh, wonderful and magnanimous in his glorifications as exemplified by his Brahma Samhita. So every morning we sing the Venum Kvandantam Aravinda Dalaya Taksham. So this is the glorification by Lord Brahma of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So interestingly here, Prabhupada is saying the demons, they cannot understand how the Supreme Personality of Godhead floated the earth on water. So essentially, one of the characteristics of the demons is to lack faith or um, be atheistic, not believing in the wonderful, glori glorious qualities of God. So as we know, there's a beautiful story where uh, one, um, he was a, a shoemaker. And so the Narada Muni came across this shoemaker and he said to him, you know, uh, Krishna is so wonderful that he can fit an elephant through the eye of a needle. And straight away the, uh, the maker of the shoes said, of course, this is easy for Krishna, he can do anything. In actual fact, every single tree contains seeds which an entire forest can exist in even just one seed. So this is the faith of the devotees, the shraddha, to understand that Krishna can literally do anything. So one can see the size of the earth, it's a huge mass um, and it weighs an incredible amount and so therefore how can it float on the water? So it's this divine potency of Krishna that he allows uh, the, the earth planet to float on the water. And it's also interesting when we analyze the planetary systems, Prabhupada says that even the earth planetary systems float in the air. So this huge amount of, uh, of mass is floating in the air. So this floating power is also described, uh, it's beautiful when it says, Maya Dyakshena Prakritihi Suyate Sa Characharam Heituna Nena Kunteya Jagad Vipari Vartate. This material nature, which is one of my energies, is working under my direction, O son of Kunti, producing all moving and non-moving beings. Under its rule, this manifestation is created and annihilated again and again. So in this entire material nation is work, uh, nature is working under the will of the Lord and he can hold up the earth, uh, he can crash them down if he wishes. Literally Krishna can do anything, uh, being the supreme personality of Godhead. So Prabhupada looks at the nature of the demons, particularly in chapter 16, uh, text 4, and Prabhupada explains that the demons are prideful. The pre demons are very arrogant and the demons are very conceited, which means they are very vain. They have this high, great sense of vanity. Uh, so this is exemplified by Hiranyakashipu, when rather than showing the mirror to Krishna, he uh, looks at the mirror in himself and thinks himself to be the greatest, the most beautiful. This is the mood of the demons. Uh, they think themselves to be, uh, they have so much pride, they have so much arrogance, conceitedness, and of course there's anger. And, and so many other things. So we, as devotees, we know these are all gates leading to hell. Last anger greed um, are gates leading to hell. So when looking at the floating on the water, I, I looked into a conversation that Srila Prabhupada had, um, and it was on December the 14th of 1966. And Srila Prabhupada is explaining that Jesus Christ is a Shaktivesh avatar or an empowered incarnation of the Lord. So indeed, Jesus could float on the water. So this mystic yoga city, um, which is described in the Nectar of Devotion, um, chap chapter, well, it doesn't say the chapter, but all, all of the yoga cities or perfections are material arts. For example, in one yoga city, there is development of the power to become so light that one can float in the air on the water. So even mundane materialists, they can engage in material activities and then they can get this mystical potency of being able to float on the water, like the earth. And you might say, well, the earth is so much bigger and the humans are only so much small, but still they have the capacity to float on water is there. And also when we look at Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 9, Chapter 10, 16, uh, Text 16, it explains about Lord Ramachandra had the spiritual potency to float rocks on the water. So we all know the beautiful story of Sita uh, being kidnapped by Ravana and then they wanted to build a bridge 
And so the Hanuman and all, all the monkeys were throwing huge rocks into the ocean and this mystical potency of Krishna's was to, because they all wrote Ram on the rocks and these rocks were capable of floating in the air or floating in the water. So Prabhupada has discussed this floating of water in other opportunities as well. Indeed, the lotus flowers were floating in the water um, when the Krishna was engaging in activities um, on the banks of the Jamuna with the gopis. So this, this floating of the water is very much there present in Srila Prabhupada's uh, writings. Indeed, Chaitanya Charitamrita, just as there are millions of fruits on the Udumbara tree, millions of universes float on the waters of the river Vairaja. So if we look at the Srimad Bhagavatam, we can understand that there is a Vairaja river which separates uh, the material world and the spiritual world. So on the other side of the Vairaja river, you find the Vaikuntha planets and you find Goloka Premdam, you also find Gokula Dham. So in here, Prabhupada is explaining, in that river Vairaja, there's millions of universes floating on the water. So this capacity of Krishna to the devotees is not such a great big deal. Floating water, uh, floating uh, huge planetary systems on the water, indeed huge universes, is not such a, a big thing for the devotees, but the demons, they don't believe in, in this at all. So also there's a beautiful pastime which explains that Krishna, uh, when he was a little baby, just before, he's floating on the devastating water, a small baby, baby lying on the leaf of a banyan tree. So Devahuti is explaining this opulence of Krishna floating on the water. So essentially, it's so beautiful when we come to this verse because we realize that now is the season of the Jagannath Ratha Yatra. So devotees all around the world are preparing uh, for their glorification of the Jagannath Ratha Yatra. So Bhakti Purushottam Swami is a very exalted Vaishnava. Indeed, he was born in Orissa and he had this great quality of understanding the pastimes and the activities of Lord Jagannath in Jagannath Puri. So there's a beautiful date this year, 10th of November. Uh, after two years break, there's going to be a Puri Parikram um, in order for the devotees to get together and par do a parikram of, a jargon of Puri, which is explained as a 21-kilometer parikram, and the devotees can get together. And um, Previously, there's been 10,000 devotees a year. Now, this year, because of the COVID break, um, Bhakti Purushottam and Maharaj is expecting 20,000 devotees from all around the world to come and do the parikram of Puri um, on November 10th, for the, especially for the appearance of Pankajanya. So we know Pankajanya is a very beautiful conch shell and the conch shell is relevant to Jagannath Puri because another name for Jagannath Puri is Shankashetra or the, the abode of the, the conch shell. And the reason for this is if you do a topographical analysis of Jagannath Puri, it looks like a conch shell. So if you do a similar topographical analysis of Braj Mandala, it looks like a lotus flower. So the conch shell is very present there. And there's a beautiful pastime in chapter 45 of the Krishna book, which explains that Shri Krishna and Balaram were extremely indebted to Sandipani Muni because Sandipani Muni acted as their guru, teaching the 64 arts and sciences. So it's a very beautiful uh, way that we understand in Krishna consciousness. Krishna teaches us the shaloka, yayatamam prapadyante tam sataiva bhajami aham mama vatmanu vartante manusaha parta savrasaha. Just try to learn to approach a spiritual master, render service to him, inquire submissively. The spiritual master can impart knowledge to you because he has seen the truth. So you, as a great personality, Krishna not only gives this instruction, but he also engages in that activity as well. Because whatever activity a great man performs, other will sure to follow in his footsteps. So Krishna accepted Sanapani Muni as his spiritual master. He taught him the 64 arts and sciences. Then there's a beautiful, when in full submission, uh, the, perhaps the origin of Guru Dakshin was when Krishna and Balaram approached Sandipani Muni and said, how can we possibly repay you for these wonderful gifts you have given us? In 64 days and nights you've imparted the entire Vedic knowledge to us. Now we have a complete understanding of everything. What can we do for you? 
And Sandy Mani, Sandy Pani Muni, he turns around and says, My son was kidnapped by a demon, Panchajana. So Panchajana kidnapped my son, and I don't know where he is. My wife, Sumuki, is completely distraught. My daughter, Nandimuki, is also t crying tears of separation from her brother. And Madhu Mangal is not cracking jokes anymore because his brother's been kidnapped. So Krishna approaches Sandipani Muni and he says, Okay, yes. Uh, and so then he says, Well, we'll have to find this Panchajana demon. So they go to the shore of the ocean. And the ocean explains that Panchajana is hiding deep in the ocean. Um, and so eventually Krishna and Balaram, they swim right to the depths of the ocean. They find this Panchajana. They kill him. They open his, bow, uh, they open his stomach. And they find that there's no ch he hasn't eaten the child. So the child has disappeared. And also when demons go, or when it's explained that the conch shell is like a bone. So the bone grew from Panchajana. And this is actually the Panchajanya that Krishna blew. Because we know Panchajanya Rishikesho Devadatam Dananjaya Pondram Dadmo Mahashankam Bhima Karma Vrikhodaraha. Lord Krishna blew his conch shell called Panchajanya. Arjuna blew his, the Devadatta, and Bhima, the voracious eater and performer of Herculean tasks, blew his terrific conch shell called Pondra. So Krishna didn't find the, the son of Sandipani Muni inside this demon's body, but he killed the demon and liberated the demon anyway. And then so Krishna approaches Yamaraj and says, I need you to return this son of Sandipani Muni. And instantly Yamaraj, um, being a, a, um, a great authority, Mahajan, uh, Yamaraj is explained as the Mahajan, so he's a great authority. So immediately he surrenders to Krishna, gives the son back, and then the son goes back with Krishna and Balaram to be presented to Sandipani Muni, to also the, his son, Madhumangal, Sumuki, and Nandimuki. So the whole family of Sandipani Muni is extremely ec ecstatic. And what happens? The demons shower flowers. So this is the occasion. Whenever there's a celebration, as Prabhupada explains here, Br Lord Brahma is glorifying Krishna. And then there's uh, always going to be a shower of flowers, the uh, Pushpa Abhishek. And it's also explained, I, I looked through all of the instances of when is there showers of flowers. So there's showers of flowers when every demon dies. When Krishna kills Vritrasura, there's a shower of flowers. When Krishna kills uh, Panchajanya, there's a shower of flowers. Also, when Grandfather Bhishma Dev is, uh, leaves his body in the presence of Krishna, there's also a shower of flowers. Now, there's also a shower of flowers when Krishna leaves to go to Mathura. There's a, also a shower of flowers when Krishna kills uh, um, Kamsa. And there's a shower of flowers when Krishna goes to Dwarka. There's a shower of flowers when Krishna leaves Dwarka. And so many shower of flowers. To this day, perhaps arguably one of the best shower of flowers uh, was for the 50th anniversary of Sri Sri Radha Gopinath, where we saw the beautiful shower flowers and the, a lot of devotees were shower, uh, getting the flower bombs and fl throwing them across the, the way, uh, such as their reminiscence of the pastimes of Krishna. So, Sani Panimuni was extremely pleased as a result of exp uh, receiving his son back from the demon, which he thought was never going to be found ever again. And so then Sandipani Muni, um, Krishna and Balaram were so, had so much humility and so much love for their spiritual master. They said to Sandipani Muni, what more can we do for you? We, you've done, given us so much. This was so little. We just went, swam in the ocean, brought a conch shell back. It's so easy. What, what more can we do to you? And Sandipani Muni's words are so beautiful. He said, having two disciples like Krishna and Balaram is the greatest gift that any spiritual master could ever receive. So that in itself was enough. He said, you've paid off your debt. You know, there's no more longer any debt as a result of having Krishna and Balaram as his disciples. So I found that as a very beautiful story and particularly re relevant um, because it, uh, this is occurring in Jagannath Puri and Jagannath Puri is shaped like a conch shell. Now going deeper into the mysteries of Jagannath Puri because we, now is the season of the Ratha Yatra and it's particularly important because as 
we know Bhadra Purnim is coming up in September. So recently there's a very beautiful uh, class where uh, Sachinanda Maharaj and Vaisheshika Prabhu were in Iskon Silicon Valley and they've actually managed to distribute over 200 Srimad Bhagavatam sets for the glory of Srila Prabhupada. And the reason why Vaisheshika Prabhu was saying, in the early days in Iskon, there was a cold war breaking out in Russia. We know the famous stories of His Holiness Indra Jumna Swami and many very wonderful devotees going to Russia, risking their lives, risking being imprisoned to spread the glories of the Grantara Srimad Bhagavatam. So Srila Prabhupada wrote a letter and he said, yes, distribution of the Bhagavatam in Russia will actually stop the Cold War. So this is the mercy of the of Srimad Bhagavatam. Krishna, in his Bhagavatam form, can stop wars occurring. So why is that historically relevant in 2022? As we know, there's a war going on between Ukraine and Russia. So in the same sense, the great devotees like Vaisheshika Prabhu and Sachinandan Maharaj are really trying to get Bhagavatam sets and they showed the video footage of these Bhagavatam sets arriving in Ukraine so the children and all the people could start reading these wonderful Bhagavatam sets and indeed there's a guarantee that this, these wars will stop as a result of the presence of the Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam. So the glories of Jagannath Puri Dham are eternal and they're always going to be there. Uh, and there's so many wonderful stories. We know that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu carried Haridas Thakur in the ocean at Puri. And so if we go to the Skanda Purana section, there's a Puri Mahatmya, a glorification of Puri, which said anyone who bathes in this ocean at Jagannath Puri will, att will attain great love of God. So bathing in the ocean, Lord Chaitanya bathed there every day, Haridas Thakur bathed there. So many wonderful devotees have gone and bathed in, in the ocean at Jagannath Puri and everyone will guarantee to attain great love of God. So if we look at Lord Brahma, we know he's made of wood. Uh, so it's very important to understand that Bilva Mangala Thakur Prabhupada quotes in the Srimad Bhagavatam that anyone who thinks that the deity is made of marble, brass or, or wood is already a resonant of hell. Because as we know, Prabhupada said these deities are actually people uh, and Krishna is personally present there. These statement when Prabhupada uh, in Krishna Balaram Mandir, they had an installation of uh, Radha Shama Sundra, Krishna Balaram and Gora Nittai, and they had the blindfolds on them prior to being installed. And Prabhupada said, once the blindfolds are off, they're personally Krishna and Radharani, they're personally Lalita and Vishaki, and they're Vishaka, and they're personally Krishna and Balaram, and they're personally Gornitai. So personally, it's not like the, the Krishna has entered into the deity, it's the deities are personally Krishna themselves. So we know that Lord Jagannath is made of wood. So another name for Jagannath is Daru. This is indicating the wood. So if we break down the syllables of Daru, we hear Da is the sufferings in the material world. And Ru, it gives eternal life of bliss and joy. So we bring Daru, Brahman together, then it cuts away all our suffering and gives eternal life of joy and bliss in the spiritual world. So that's beautiful breaking down the syllables of Daru. And also if we break down the syllables of Guru, so Gu is, as we know, Guna. So there's three Gunas, Sattva Gun, Raja Gun, Tamagun. So Gu actually has the capacity to deliver us from these three modes of material nature. So Guru uh, brings us out of the modes of material nature. And Prabhupada writes in chap Canto 7, Chapter 15, Text 26, the Guru is directly God. So as we sing every day Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur's prayers, Saksha Daritvena Samasta Shastra, Sakshad is directly, so this is explaining the Guru is directly God. So it's really interesting that when we do all these holy pilgrimages, we circumambulate Govardhan Hill, uh, we perhaps go and take bath in the Ganga, just taking darshan of uh, beautiful deities of Radha Madhava and the Panchatattva in, in Mayapur, the headquarters of ISKCON. And then it's explained in the Skanda, Pavana, Skanda Purana that we'll actually receive all the fruits of our pilgrimages by going to Jagannath Puri. 
So it's a very important understanding. So we can do so much activities in Vrindavan, in, uh, in Radhakund, uh, in Parikrams, in Govardhan Hill. But essentially to receive the fruits of our pilgrimage, we will achieve that in uh, Jagannath Puri. But it's also explained that Jagannath Puri is named as Durlaba Shetra. So this place is very difficult to get to, Jagannath Puri. And it's so many times devotees have organized parikrams. They've, yes, we're going to go and do Puri parikram this year. All of a sudden they miss their flight or the bus going there doesn't go. So this is the nature of Durlabhakshetra. It's very difficult to obtain. And we know that there is glorified by Jayadev Goswami in Jagannath Puri is the uh, Dash Avatar Stotram. A very beautiful prayer which firstly glorifies Mina Sharira, Keshava Drita, Mina Sharira, the fish incarnation, Keshava Drita, Kormad Sharira, the, the um, tortoise incarnation, the Varaha, Nashringa, Vamana. So one might think to oneself, you know, I have darshan of Radha Krishna, I have darshan of Gornitai, I have darshan of Jagannath Baladev Subhadra. When will I ever be able to see the fish incarnation? So the, the bad news is, if you want to see the fish incarnation, if you want to see the tortoise incarnation, it's only a 427,000 year wait. Because we're 5,000 years into Kali Yuga, and the next Satya Yuga will roll around in 427,000 years. So that's one way to take darshan of all the Dash Avatar Stotrams. The other way is we take darshan of Lord Jagannath. Same benefit we receive if, or if we want to take all the darshan of the Dash Avatars, it's all personally present within Lord Jagannath. Secondly, uh, if one goes to Jagannath Puri, one receives the benefit of going to all the other holy dharms. Why is this so? Because we know that Madhurya is present in Jagannath Puri. All Darya, or the compassionate nature of Lord Chaitanya with his eternal disciples and associates, it's also present in Jagannath Puri. And the Aishvarya is also present, the, the glory of the, the Lakshmi Narayan, or the opulent worship, is also present in Jagannath Puri. So the Aishvarya is present in actual Jagannath Puri temple. Then the Gundicha is a place for the Vrindavan pastimes. And then uh, so many of these beautiful situations occur. So there's a very beautiful story in the Skanda Purana, particularly the Puri Mahatma, uh, Mahatmya section. And it explains that, you know, Yamaraj is afraid of losing his job. So Yamaraj, as we know, at the time of death, he calculates all the pious activities, all the sinful activities, and then has the capacity to send an individual to hell. So why is this so? Because Jagannath, it's explained that if people take darshan of Jagannath even once, then they're guaranteed to not go to hell, guaranteed to never be liberated. Just dug it. Uh, darshan of Jagannath once. So Yamaraj was pretty fired up. He said, I'm not going to have any work to do with this appearance of Lord Jagannath. Who, I'm, I'm going to have to close hell down. You know, it's going to have to be only just the heavenly planets and go look at Vrindavan now. So Yamaraj, he goes to, to Jagannath and Yamara, Jagannath is very intelligent. He knows past, present and future. Uh, we know that Yamaraj is God. He knows uh, Vedaham, Samatitani, Vartamani, Chajuna, Bhavisyani, Chabutani, Mamtu Veda Nakashana. So this is explaining that Krishna knows past, present, and future. Mamtu Veda Nakashana. However, hardly anyone knows Krishna. So Yamaraj goes to Jagannath and he submits his plea. And automatically, just like dealing with a used car, a salesman, uh, Yamaraj turns to his wife and says, Lakshmi, will you take care of this? <laughs> so I thought that was a beautiful situation. And so Lakshmi, Lakshmi, she speaks to Yamaraj and she says, listen, Surya Nan, because it's a beautiful way of dealing or explaining Yamaraj is the son of Surya Bhagavan. Jamuna is his sister and Shuni Devi is his other brother. So Surya Bhagavan has three children, Yamaraj, Jamuna and Shuni Devi. So listen, Surya Nan, it's impossible for us to leave Jagannath Puri. So Jagannath Puri, there will always eternally be present Lord Jagannath and Lakshmi Devi. But it's very important to explain that similar to we see the 
dissolution of Govardhan Hill because in its original manifestation, when Govardhan first appeared, it's explained to be 80, mile, 80 yojanas high which is roughly 80 miles, which extends hugely into the air. So if we go to Govardhan even now, just 5,000 years into Kali Yuga, we see the dissolution of Govardhan Hill. It's getting smaller and smaller. And in, indeed, we can the highest point of Govardhan Hill, we could just walk up. Not that we do as Gaudiya Vaishnavas, because in the mood of Lord Chaitanya, we never put our feet on Govardhan Hill, uh, because that's what Lord Chaitanya did. So... Lakshmi is explaining to Yamaraj, um, whoever takes darshan of my husband will be free from his karma and will never have to go to hell. Uh, you can have influence anywhere else other than Puri Dham, so take your business elsewhere. You can't work over here. So Yamaraj immediately surrenders to Lakshmi Devi and he says, okay, you, you win. Um, I understand that Lord Jagannath is very powerful and so therefore I will leave and therefore have no influence over the devotees who take darshan of Lord Jagannath because all their karma is completely destroyed. So everything is very mysterious in Jagannath Puri. Indeed, even the acquisition of the wood is also a very mysterious activity because it's explained there's one particular temple where the four pajaris sit in trance and they're chanting loudly the holy names of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So these pujaris, their, their duty is to find the tree in which to carve out Jagannath, Baladev, Subhadra and Sudarshan. So it's a beautiful story. All these stories are factual about Jagannath Puri because as we say here, the demons have no faith, they don't believe, but the devotees have the capacity to re realize this is the actual truth and it's very factual. So these Four Pajar, every 12 years they have to recycle the wood and go and find a tree. And so they rely on the Chacha Guru in their heart. They take darshan of their particular deity in which they need to acquire the new bit of wood. And so therefore they rely on their heart. They chant deeply the holy names of the Lord. There's one time where a devotee was meditating on Lord Jagannath and trying to find out where that tree uh, that would be acquired from. And so he ran for 22 days from Jagannath Puri to Madhya province, which is 1,300 kilometers in 22 days. It works out to be about 60 kilometers a day of running in a trance-like state to try and find the wood for Jagannath. So he arrived at this house and he realized in his heart, this is the wood for Jagannath. He knocks on the door and the owner of the house is a Muslim. So it's, this is factual story. And he said, no, I'm prepared to die. This is my property. I don't believe in deity worship. So therefore, uh, you can go away. So the Pujaris have this tremendous capacity to live anywhere, stay anywhere. So they camped overnight. They camped out overnight outside the front of this house. And it took them eventually six days, similar to the story of Chan Kazi, where Nishringadev appears in his dreams and then he starts uh, the, 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 tassel, the claws of Nishringadev on the chest of Chan Kazi. So then eventually Chan Kazi surrenders to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and allows the Sankirtan Yagya of Lord Chaitanya to continue. So similar to that, uh, the Muslims started having dreams of Nishringadev waking up in the middle of the night. Oh, there's a half man, half lion. So straight away, <laughs> straight away, he became very fearful. And then automatically he realized he just had to surrender to these pujaris who'd fallen, uh, who'd camped outside the front of his house, allowed them to cut the tree. And that this tree traveled 1,300 kilometers back to Jagannath Puri. Now it's really interesting when we go to the... the um, or Darya nature of Lord Jagannath, or the compassionate nature of Lord Jagannath. So looking at it, some devotees only have one activity for a whole year. For example, like we know that there's a rope that pulls the cart, so those, there's some devotees that just thread the rope together for the cart to be pulled. That's their whole activity for the whole year. And still, their prashadam is sponsored by Jagannath Puri, by the king, um, 
as a result of just their simple one activity. There's another activity where to let everyone know that the prasadam is ready, that someone blows a bullhorn. So that activity alone guarantees that that whole family, not only that person who blows the bullhorn, but every single member of his family will be given prasadam for the whole year. Such is the Audarya, compassionate nature of Lord Jagannath. So there's a, a very beautiful story uh, where the standard of deity worship is very high in Jagannath Puri. So as we see in this temple here, if you leave the door open, sometimes pigeons come inside, animals come inside. Animals have the tendency to want to have darshan of Lord Jagannath. They can experience that God is there, so they want to come inside. So there's a beautiful story where in Jagannath Puri, a cat came inside the temple and climbed up onto Lord Balaram. So this is a major no-no in Narada Pancharatra, and you have to clean the entire temple. Uh, all the deities have to be cleaned, the temple room has to be cleaned, the whole temple has to be shut down, and everyone stops their duties. If you're a cook, you stop that, you have to clean the temple. If you blow the bullhorn, there's no prasadam anymore because Krishna is not eating, they have to shut the temple down. So this is what happened. And then it's really interesting because 40 kilometers away, there's one particular lake which has to, you have to get water from that particular lake to cleanse the deity, cleanse the temple room, cleanse the whole temple. If that, and so the Pajaris, upon closing the temple down, uh, notified everyone. And Jagannath Puri is in a situation where everyone is dependent on Krishna. Uh, so, you know, everyone is completely surrendered to Krishna. Uh, there's no sense of proprietorship. There's no sense of false ego. Krishna owns everything. Nirmamo, Nirahankara, Yomad, Bhakta, Same, Priyaha. So, Nirmamo, no sense of proprietorship. Nirahankara, no false ego. And what is the result of that? Yomad, Bhakta, Same, Priyaha. You become very dear to Krishna with no sense of proprietorship and no false ego. So, these. Pujaris then went to the lake 40 kilometers away and they found that the lake was dry. So then it's really interesting. The government intervened and said, you know, people will die if there's no prasadam. Uh, this is an old uh, superstitious rule. You need to overcome that. Just come back open the temple and start cooking for everyone and um, there won't be any trouble. So the Pujaris were so staunch in their lacking uh, or, or not adhering to the instructions from the government that they still wait and they stand and camped by this lake and waited for the water. Now it's really interesting, it took five days for the water to start, for the, for the rain to come and it was out of season. We know uh, India has very much monsoon season, rainy season and so rain fell on this lake after five days and then they managed to bring the water back, cleanse the whole temple, and then open the temple up again. So this is the mood in, in, in Jagannath Puri. Everyone is very staunchly in love with uh, Jagannath and really engaging in very high standard of deity worship. So there's so many stories where, for example, a Pujari would be leaving the temple. And as we know that Lord Jagannath is not only the Lord of the humans, he's also the Lord of the Devatas. So particularly between 12 midnight and 2 a.m., the doors are closed for humans, and that's the opportunity for all the Devatas to come and take darshan of Lord Jagannath. Explain that, it's explained that 330 million Devatas all come and take darshan of Lord Jagannath between the time of midnight and 2 a.m. So it's very beautiful when you go into a deeper level analysis of this. One time a Pujari was walking home after his service of closing the Jagannath temple. Midnight occurs, he closes the door, now's the time for the demigods. He walks out and then he feels this presence behind him, these huge steps walking behind him. He looks back and he sees this 15 feet tall Devita, Vibhishana. And so then he speaks to him and he says, you know, Vibhishana, um, I want to be able to tell my friends, like in these days we have selfies, I saw Gurudev, I could have got it on my Instagram, um, I saw uh, the Srila Prabhupada Samadhi, you can find it, I posted it on Facebook, but in those days they didn't have smartphones or anything like that. So uh, Krishna, um, sorry, the Pujari asked Vibhishana, how can I prove it to my friend, I want to tell all my friends. So he says, here, take my armlet which being 15 foot tall, his armlet is the size of a bullock cart's wheel. 
And so if you go to Jagannath Puri to this day, you can still take darshan of this armlet of Vibhishan. And Vibhishan then walks into the ocean, uh, never to be seen again. So this is the mercy of what occurs in Jagannath Puri. And also, as we know, the Jagannath is very opulent. He has this Aishvarya, um, he, Lakshmi is his wife. He has beautiful jewels in his forehead, which attracts the Dakoits. So Dakoits will come to the Jagannath Puri temple. They'll see the jewels and think, well, it's probably better in my pocket than in, in, in Jagannath's forehead. So they stay there until midnight. They know the doors are going to close. Then this one particular Dakoit, it, and interestingly, the Pujaris reveal that this happens quite a lot. Uh, someone will come to the temple, know that the doors will close at midnight, they go inside and think they can steal the jewels, and then when it opens at 2 a.m. in the morning, they can take off with all the jewels. So, so many times the pujaris come at 2 a.m. for their service, and there's dead bodies, or a dead body, lying flat. Um, such is the protective nature of Lord Jagannath. Um, the, these dacoits literally die in front of the de deity. So... There's also another very beautiful story that, as we know, Puri Temple is very close to the ocean. And so there's a beautiful story where the Brahmanas are all sitting down, they're chanting their mantras, they're trying to focus on Krishna's lotus feet, they're trying to focus on their Seva to Jagannath, they're trying to worship the Archa Vigraha of the Lord, and then they hear this ocean crashing because there's so, like, it's very, um, there's tumultuous sounds coming from the ocean. And so then the devotees, they went to Hanuman. Uh, and said, you know, perhaps is there something you can do to stop the ocean? <laughs> you know, there's these huge noises, we can't concentrate, everything's um, uh, difficult for us. So in his infinite mercy, Hanumanji says, yes, I'll buffer the sound of the ocean. And even to this day, you can't hear the ocean sounds inside the temple because of Hanuman's mercy upon the residents of Jagannath Puri. He buffers the sound of the ocean. And then it's interesting if you take darshan of the Hanuman deity, Hanuman's ears are burnt. So the, the burnt ears of Hanuman, symbolic of his buffering, um, this, is, this is a wonderful exemplary qualities of um, Sri Jagannath Puri. Now, we ha yesterday we had the Rathayatra, which is a very beautiful occasion in Gaudiya Vaishnavism. And it's something that really everyone gets together, everyone experiences the joy and bliss of the Rathayatra. And then if we go to the Madhulila chapter 13, it ex explains that Lord Chaitanya experienced ecstasy as a result of dancing in front of the Rathayatra card. So there's a festival. Uh, without us even knowing, us, so many festivals occur. So the Pandu Vijay is symbolic where the Jagannath, Baladev and Subhadra come off their throne and then onto their respective carts. Um, so it's explained that the particular type of people is the Daityas. Uh, they're not Brahmana, Kshatriyas or Vaishyas. Uh, they're a lower class. Prabhupada explains that they're, they're pig farmers, therefore they're very strong and well-built. They can carry Balaram. As we know, um, Balaram here is quite dainty, uh, but as you go to Jagannath Puri, they're, they're huge. Um, and the Jagannath bodyguards or Daityas are very strong, well-built individuals, and they're the ones responsible for carrying Jagannath, Baladev, and Subhadra. And then the name of the gold is explained, the Golders actually pull the cart. And it's a beautiful story where we know that Lord Chaitanya appeared as a result of Advaita Acharya praying to the Sh his Shalagram Shila, and therefore Lord Chaitanya appeared upon the request of Advaita Acharya. Now, who, how, who calls Lord Jagannath? So many personalities calling for Lord Jagannath. Narada Muni, Brahma. Uh, Shiva's wife, Parvati, also calls for Jagannath Puri, then, uh, for Jagannath to come, and Jagannath comes. So there's a beautiful story where Narada Muni had Lord Jagannath, or, or had Krishna's prasadam, and he's walking around Kailash in ecstasy. Oh, the best prasadam ever. I had this huge pile of rasgulas and galabjamans, and oh, he's in so much ecstasy. His hair's standing on end, tears are streaming from his eyes. And he comes across Lord Shiva, and Lord Shiva says to him, you know, didn't you save something for me? We're like brothers. You know, surely, you know, why isn't there something for me? And then Narada Muni checks underneath his fingernails and there's a little bit of prasadam left. He gives it to Lord Shiva in his mouth. 
such sharing between brothers. And then Par Shiva goes back and he's in ecstasy. He's dancing. Oh, Jai Jagannath, Jai Jagannath. So much ecstasy, tears streaming from his eyes. He comes across Parvati. And then Lord Shiva had nothing to share with Parvati. <laughs> So this is the reason to this day Bhimala Devi has, takes the first prasadam from Lord Jagannath. Um, in every single Jagannath temple there's Bhimala Devi. Uh, so anyone who takes Jagannath prasadam, it's not only Maha Prasad, it's Maha Maha Prasad, having been consumed first by Bhimala Devi. And then because she's calling out, you know, feeling herself to be the mother of the whole of creation. It's really interesting if we go to Sri Radha Sahasranama Stotra, Shiva explains to Parvati the names of Srimati Radharani. There's one name of Srimati Radharani explained as Janani, the mother of all. So this Srimati Radharani is the mother of all. Um, and so many devotees, if you go to Vrindavan, you hear beautiful stories of Bhubaneshwar Prabhu who recently left his body. And then people were ex asking him, you know, don't you feel compassion for your mother? You've left them, you've left material life. And straight away, Bhuvaneshwar Prabhu's response was, Sri Mati Radharani is my mother. Very staunchly accepting Radharani into his heart as his mother. So essentially, the pastimes of Lord Jagannath are eternal. They're also uh, never ending. You can always, there's ne never get to a point of glorifications of Lord Jagannath, his beauty his magnanimity, his wonderful qualities, um, and his ability to really take away all the karma, all the impious activities from the fallen conditioned souls. So we come to the junction now where perhaps Prasadam is almost ready. <laughs> so would anyone like to ask a question or give a comment? Yes, Ravi Shankar Prabhu. Right, okay. Um, so looking at your first question, uh, you're, ex you're asking about Varaha transferring his energy to the Supreme, uh, to, to her so that she can float on the earth. And so why can't we see it? Is that right? Why can't we see the transference of energy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so in answer to this question, I will just remind all the devotees of uh, that beautiful quality of only the Premanjanat Bhaktas or Premanjana Churita Bhakti Vilochanina. So those devotee, devotees who have pure love for Krishna, they can see this occurring, whereas those who don't have the pure love for Krishna, they can't see it occurring. So when we fly in an airplane, um, why can't we see it? It's essentially because our senses are imperfect. It's explained the four defects of the living entities. We have imperfect senses, we commit mistakes, uh, we're easily illusioned, and we have the propensity to cheat. So we have all those present with us. So therefore the imperfect senses means that visual acuity isn't as highly refined as perhaps like a devata 